hours unnecessarily. The emergency manager issued an order specifically directed to you, empowering the, the president of city council to control these meetings so that folks that spend their time to come down here and attend these meetings aren't put through endless speeches. Point of order, Mr. President. That ain't even an answer Mr. to Mayor, the question. Just answering your question. So, oh, okay. so you sort of pick and choose the... Yes, you pick and choose the, the, the orders that you want to follow, and, and yes, during a meeting, Robert's Rules applies under, under the provisions of Public Act 436, and to the, extent, to the extent that the emergency manager assigns matters to counsel. Uh, so yes, the Robert's Rules does apply in a meeting, as do the orders issued by the emergency manager. Uh, one of those orders that was specifically directed at you was intended to control these meetings to ensure folks aren't sitting here for hours and hours while you make a speech after every single person speaks. It was in intended to empower the council president to control these meetings, to ensure that they're professional and dignified, and that folks that come down here aren't subjected to this. The council president should be uh, able to run these meetings, to recognize you at the time that is appropriate, and you can make your comments then. Uh, so we are working under Robert's rules. Uh, thank Subject you. Subject to the order of the emergency manager that empowers the council president to recognize you when the council president sees fit. That's what Robert's rules do, Mr. Um, Bate. You say through you to the president. That's, who, that's how you get recognized under Robert's rules. So let's not debate it. I understand what order three says, and I understand what Robert's rules say. Both of them say you get recognized by the president. So God bless you. Thank you. This is a time set aside for members of the public to address the City Council. Madam Clerk is going to uh, keep time. I'm going to ask you, she'll call your name, come to the microphone. You have five minutes to speak. Upon reaching the fourth minute of your five minutes, I will ask you to sum up. And at the conclusion of your five minutes, I will ask you to set down. At the conclusion of all the members of the public addressing the City Council at that time so that all members of the public had the right to address us in a timely, orderly manner, <clears throat> I will then ask Council members to respond to those in the public um, that have expressed concerns for us. So first to be called this evening, Madam Clerk. First to be called is Mr. R. L. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. Good evening, Earl. Hey, I'm, good evening, Mr. President, and to all the council members of Flint, I'm our Earl Mitchell. And uh, first of all, I, I grant each and every one of you council, council person of financial finance, of, of finance, me, myself, and I grant you a financial, financial, for you will never be broke dealing with the city, even though we got a financial, Emergency furniture from the Capitol, Lansing up here, sitting right down here early, trying to call the shots before I And then, what I want to address today to you, Mr. President, to the chair, Madam Clerk, to uh, the new council lady over there, Holloway, Galloway, ask her a question, and she's going to give me answers if it's all right. Okay, Ms. Galloway, it's, how do you feel about one of your Conrads being threatened to speak his first day on the job like you by gov for freedom of speech uh, under the name of uh, this, the first council, Mays? How do you feel about, you feel that's injustice for the rest of your council, council, councilman? Could you guess, give me some feedback on that? Yeah, I'll give you feedback. Each council member will answer your questions at the end of the oh, comment period. Oh, okay. Thank you. And back to my, what I was going to address you about this city, this uh, financial uh, snow emergency stuff, about this, about this ship, this, the act of God has something to do with this. I was stowed in from my, uh, from my house, but I was stowed in to another place and I ended up getting robbed because they won't let me out unless I pay some money because everybody else is in there paying the money and everything. Hey, I said, let me go get my shovel. Let me go buy a shovel and shovel's out. We stuck in, but I went 
she, she wouldn't let me get a shovel, so I went to my resident, and, and I couldn't even get to my own house. I felt like, man, the snow was up to my waist on my, on my street, and I had to shovel them out. And, and I come here to listen at this early fella talking about putting the cap, capital on a 357, talking about see how we're going to get out from under the gun. I mean, at 347, 336, whatever that's somewhere in the numbers, but it feel like we're on the 357, all this drive-by shooting and stuff. And you had like, you the main kingpin, Mr. President, sitting up there, you and the city attorney over there talking about Mays, doing that all, talking about indecent, speaking in a, talking about public speaking and uh, that's why I asked Ms. Uh, Conway to respond on that stuff and it, you see what the mayor trying to talk about that re Democrat, Republican talk, Republican talking that junk in there talk to Democratic and we're supposed to be Democrats and, and uh, I should have said take that stuff back down to Alabama with, well, but the Detroit police up in here with Jimmy Patrick and all that stupid oh, looking curiosity and all that Oh, and my, and got my councilman over there scratching his head, sweating bullets, you know, <clears throat> under the name of, I got my councilman name, but looking at things, hey, I'm going to lose my time. Thank you, R.L. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Quincy Murphy. Mr. Murphy. Good evening, Quincy. Good evening. Um, I got a, a couple of things that I want to um, speak on tonight, so I'm going to try to be as brief as possible. The first one um, I would like to talk about is referring to um, Council Number 130748 on page 5 uh, with the press release with the um, weather um, issue that was uh, related. And um, what I'm here to uh, request tonight is to have some type of public hearing or a meeting to discuss the situation that happened recently with the ice storm and the snowstorm in the community. And I won't um, read off of this letter, but um, I do have a letter that I will submit to you guys. But um, recently, as we all know, we had a bad ice storm and a snowstorm. And in my community, on my street, on my block, I can only speak for what I had to witness in my community where um, 314 and 318 um, Myrtle Street, um, there was a um, big tree that fell in the backyard of one of the residential houses and um, tore the roof up, the side of the house, bust the windows out, and it's in both of the driveways because they driveways are kind of butted together. And um, that situation is still um, exists. The um, residents don't have the means of income to actually um, get the tree removed um, across the street from me. There was a tree that fell in the street that me and my neighbor, uh, Leon, went and moved the street, um, tree on the side just so the cars could get through on the side of me. You got a tree that um, fell halfway but didn't fall all the way in the street, so cars got to go around and go on the um, yard across the street from them. Um, Looking at the wiring and the trees and the wires, I think it's a um, situation and I think it's an um, urgent situation that needs to be addressed. And um, I was um, listening to you guys earlier about the 30 grants that you guys applied for. So maybe this could, even though it was a bad situation for it, maybe it could be turned around to a positive situation where we can go and um, try to find some funding because I think we may need to look at some federal, state, and local funding to deal with um, all the trees that has fell in the community. I also think maybe we can get um, someone or some volunteers per ward or something to go out and just actually assess how bad the um, trees have failed in the community because I don't know if we actually know how bad it is out there in the community. And from my street and in my block, it's real bad. And I hope we can be able to address it. Um, I called the Parks and Recreation and left messages on the phone for them and gave them the addresses. So it almost kind of seemed like because we moved the tree to the side that it's not going to get picked up at all now. But there are several trees and branches along, out in the community, and I don't know if it's just in our area, 
but I'm quite sure it's a whole bunch of other people that's um, dealing with the same situation. I have, um, why this is so compassion and a concern to me, one of my residents, um, power went out because the tree fell on the utility wires and she had just got out the hospital. She was on oxygen, then um, wasn't able to, um, thinking the consumers was gonna come back on instead of just leaving and she ended up passing away. Um, I don't know whether it was because of health issues or because the utilities was off. So we don't want this to happen to other residents because I know when I look right across the street, it's trees and all kind of wires and I don't know if it's the city responsibility or the um, consumer. So that's one of my issues. And I give the emergency manager and the mayor a letter uh, requesting that we come together and come kind of form something to address this issue. My other one issue that I will pass out to you guys is I submitted a letter to Jackie Poplar, um, councilman for the um, second ward, and um, CC Brian Nolden, and hopefully the rest of you guys receive this. You, as you know, we've been working on trying to um, get Burnt School and open it to a community center. And what I requested from city council, and I'll pass this along with you guys, is to draft a resolution so that we can submit to the school board of support and us turning this community center. You need center. to sum up. You have one minute. And turning this community, um, this school into a community center. And before I sit down, one of my um, main concerns is I've been following the community development block grant dollars, and I noticed that the um, request for funds has not um, been um, posted. And um, usually January the 15th be the deadline for um, the community development block grant dollars, and it has not been uh, posted. And if someone can speak on the community development block grant dollars and why it has not been um, request for proposals out. Thank you, and I'm gonna pass this around. Thank you. Mr. President, I would like to send a referral uh, to Mr. Early, uh, to the law department to investigate um, the opportunity or options of any federal relief for the last two natural disasters. I'm speaking about the ice storm and the snowstorm that we had in the city of Flint to see if there's any money available on the federal level or any other level to assist us in this type of effort to remove uh